As the Gospels tell us, our Lord was moved with compassion for the leper. When the leper went before him, knelt down and said, Lord, if you will it, you can cure me. Is the gospel for us, is it something just that happened a long time ago, or is it something that we think is real today? I think many men and women today have that same feeling as the leper. They, they wonder, can I ever be cured? Can I ever have hope in my life? Their leprosy is invisible to the rest of us. We don't know what they labor under. But they feel it. They feel that, that sense of alienation from God and from others. And they're looking for hope. They're looking for a cure. And maybe in their minds they compose these great eloquent speeches of all their suffering, all their pain, and all the, the anguish they've gone through. We can imagine that the leper in the Gospels felt the same way, that he thought the same thing that he was ready to go to the Lord and tell the Lord all the things that were going wrong in his life, how his leprosy had, had alienated him from everybody else, that he had to cry out, unclean, unclean. But his response was just to kneel down before Jesus, to say, Lord, if you will it, you can cure me. And Jesus' response is so wonderful. I will it be made clean. So very simple. Many men and women feel that they have a kind of leprosy, a kind of disfigurement, a kind of alienation from others. And a lot of people feel this because of their sexual desires. They feel alienated from the Lord, whether it's because of a same-sex attraction, whether it's because of an addiction to pornography, or to other kinds of, of, of sexual activity that they know in their hearts is wrong. They want to be made clean, but they don't know how. And Jesus offers us that answer, to kneel down before him and to tell the Lord, Lord, if you will it, you can heal me. Jesus is offering us a chance, a, a vision of hope. And the church continues that message of hope, of restoration, of healing. Many times, people feel, even, even committed Catholics, feel that the church's teachings on human sexuality are a series of thou shalt nots. But really what the church is offering us are a series of thou shalt. Thou shalt have a whole and integrated vision of the human person. Thou shalt see that your sexuality is a gift from God, a way for you to relate to others. Thou shalt see that marriage is a gift of the whole of your life. Everything that you have and everything that you are, you give to your spouse. The church says, thou shalt offer your fertility to your spouse. Thou shalt be so open that no barrier comes between you and your spouse. Thou shalt have a union of the whole of your life that every sexual act has to be done in view of the union and the fertility of the other and of yourself. The church is offering us a vision of hope, of something that's beautiful, of something that's good. Far from being a series of, of no's, the church wants us to proclaim, yes. Yes, I want to be generous. Yes, I want to love. Yes, I want goodness and happiness in my life. And the church tells us the only way that that can be is by imitating our Lord in his generosity. The lives of the saints show us in many different myriad ways a way to be Christian, a way to be holy. But the saints didn't arrive at the heights of holiness from the very beginning. It was a process they had to convert. They had to change and give themselves over to Christ more and more every day. The church is offering us a chance to be saints, 
a chance to grow in holiness, a chance to be good. As we go forward in our Christian lives, I invite you, my brothers and sisters, to kneel down before the Lord in the person of his minister and to say to the Lord, Lord, if you will it, you can cure me. You can heal me. Whatever I have in my heart that's disordered, that's turned away from him, I repent of. I turn away and I ask the Lord's forgiveness. As we go to the sacrament of confession and again and again, the Lord heals our hearts. He takes what's disordered, he forgives it, and he begins the process of restoration, of turning us back to him, of making us more and more like him. As we kneel down before him and as we say to him, Lord, if you will it, you can heal me. We listen to his response. I do will it be made clean. Thank you.